Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow, joined at the desk today by Joshua Fekez Quest for an exciting swing down between the Sultans of the South. We have North Carolina State University coming up against George Mason University, two very strong Southern Region teams looking to prove a point today here as they are both 3-0, and looking to go 4-0 and late into the game and uh, send the other packing down to 3-1. and yeah, this is really exciting because the South is uh, as a region that can be highly contested because uh, the talent pool is so varied down there. Um, so yeah, North Carolina State University, they were uh, a pretty big school last year. They came in, I believe, the top four in their, their uh, region, their conference, and they've only improved. They've had a lot of practice outside of, the, uh, outside of Collegiate. They've um, uh, been an upsurge. I believe they were... Uh, I mean, they've been doing, doing some other tournaments as well. I do know that Shadow Visions, he's got a lot of practice. He's actually a Zoe main, which is why you're seeing that on uh, George Mason, sure. that band. Yeah, he used to be a really big RE player. Still a big RE player, but uh, Zoe, one of his big champions being taken away there. We still have Hani and Johnny in the bot side from last year. That is the the barcodes. That is still Johnny from last year. Don't don't get it twisted. We do have Donut Delight and Whoppers also joining their team. George Mason, though, they have something to prove. They're banning out Caitlyn, the Ivern, and, of course, again, that Shadow Vision Zoe. This one should be good. I'm really excited to see who the South actually, uh, or who rises to power in the South. Yeah, a little bit of background on this George Mason University. It's Ion, Firefly, Route, Enrique, and Alex. I believe the only new name I'm seeing here is Enrique. Um, four of these five members were playing last season in, uh, you know, the the back when it was the ULL Campus Series. Um, this team squared off uh, in the semifinals, round of four. George Mason made it all the way to the round of four. Lost to Texas A&M, I believe, who then went on to barely beat uh, NCSU in the final uh, game of, of uh, in the final game, best of five series um, right. and took the South for themselves. So both of these are, are very late game contenders in the Southern region, squaring off here at 3-0, and maybe even a little earlier than we expected to see them. Um, because this is this is two very strong teams coming up against one another. AD priority as Zaya and Varys are locked in without a second thought. Yeah, that's interesting. They're already going to show up their bottom lane here. Um, so Johnny, he's uh, uh, some of them say some people do say that you know Hani he is the little bit better of the uh, bot lanes uh, bot lane synergy there, but. Um, I mean, together, they work very well. And actually, you're going to see that synergy with the Zaya and the Rakan as well. So you're going to get that extra bonus uh, dash distance with Rakan uh, going with the Zaya. Very easy to get in and out, especially with the Zaya-Rakan combination. I do like that. Varus, he is uh, coming into the meta pretty hard lately because of his long range. He can, just, he can stay safe. He can also scale into the late game pretty well. And... Um, if we're gonna see any new new cops, thank God we're not. Or at least from George Mason, we do see Sejuani picked up. I was gonna say Nunu does work well with Varus on a theoretical level, but again, I haven't quite seen it work out uh, on a practical level. But it doesn't matter on the, as far as George Mason goes. We're gonna see Sejuani, Brom picking up. They're gonna they have a lot of protection for Varus right now. I do enjoy that considering Varus. Again, he's safe because he's so far uh, long range, but he is an immobile champion. We're gonna see what he picks up. Where what Shadow Visions picks up in the mid lane here. Yeah, I think the Brahms pretty necessary just to keep yourself in good standings there. Talia picked up four Shadow Visions in the mid lane, so for the side of George Mason, they opted to save their solo laners for the last couple picks. Going to leave an interesting uh, couple bands then now in the in the hands of North Carolina State. North Carolina State said they want to hold on to that jungler. They don't mind picking Talia blind. They're a okay with that and. Very uh, very strong roster already coming out with the Zaya, the Rakan, and the Talia. This is um, a lot of a statement being made. So there goes the Nunu. They don't want to have to deal with that uh, just in the jungle rotation here. And got to wonder, you know, how much how much they can put on to Donut Delight and Whoppers because these are two players that we've not seen as much from. Uh, if you're doing your homework on North Carolina State, you maybe don't know as much about these two in particular. You kind of have an idea of what you're going up against with you know, the three champions and the three players that have already picked at this point. Now it's now it's two big question marks. So Skarner and the new new band is just jungle priority. A um, little bit of mid coming out uh, for the side of North Carolina State as they're ready to lock in Zach. Yeah, so the Zach being locked in actually with the Rakan shows that they have a lot of engage over our North Carolina State. It's going to be really fun seeing Zaya. Zaya can actually get out with her ultimate very nicely. Uh, a nice get agile free card. Talia can be very um, safe as well. Um, not to mention uh, help out with that engage because once you get a knockup, you can also get a seismic. Uh, um, what was it? Seismic discharge, I believe it was called. It's been a while since I've casted Leah. I haven't, I haven't, haven't casted Hollywood in a while from Columbia College, but. Um, 
Yeah, uh, Talia does synergize very well with uh, both Rakan and Zack. Dishes out a lot of damage. I'm gonna really, really excited to see the Wombo come out from uh, NCSU. But on the other side, speaking of Wombo, we do have the Oriana locked in. And yeah, Nunu ban, I'm glad to see that one. Skarner ban, I'm not surprised. Skarner has been, uh, gotten, he got buffed in the recent patches. And uh, he's actually pretty pretty strong right now. Very good engage, although he is still uh, suffers from not having a gap closer. But they're still going to take that one away from Donut Delight. But we do have a Gnar and an Oriana locked in. And that's going to be more frontline coming up for Varus. Not to mention a little bit of engage as well. That synergizes very well, again, with uh, mid lane. Uh, route on the Oriana. That's going to be very interesting. Both of these teams rely heavily on their engages and their Wombo, and that's going to uh, result in some huge clashes coming up into the yeah, game. I, was, I feel like we, the viewers, are the luckiest ones here, right? Because these are two compositions that are just going to want to fling themselves at one another often and just attack and attack and attack. And it's a little bit pick focused from each side. Uh, obviously, they're going to be happy to get a pick. I think a little bit more so on the side of George Mason. Um, just with the, the potential for, you know, a very clean Sejuani ultimate into, they'll take just one champion with that if they can. Um, but I, I feel like a full five on five team fight very much in the cards for both of these teams, especially in CSU. They're going to, they're going to love that with the composition that they've drafted for themselves with just the Orn and the Zach and the Talia all creating one big old mess here on the map. So would love to see that. Uh, the question is at what time would we see that? Because they're going to scale in a little bit differently and depending on how the laning phase goes you know we may get to a point where neither team is really comfortable pulling this one off so i think we need to look at the story of the lanes you know how is the safe oriana going to match into talia how is the nar going to bully out the orn potentially and, and what's going to happen in this bottom lane uh, to really set the tone for the rest of the mid game yeah the so team comps like this um especially when you have such safe um uh, safe player safe champions it's really interesting. We've been seeing a lot of uh, 50 plus minute games in the uh, EU LCS. Uh, some some of them in NA and uh, definitely definitely in over in LPL and LCK. Been seeing a lot of long games, and uh, comps like this are why you have tanky front lines that won't die. They can engage and also disengage if it's a bad idea. You have safe ADCs um, that <laughs> they can pelt away all they want at the front line, but it's still a tank, so the tank again can disengage. And then you have mid laners who can burst champions, but you're going against so many tanks, you can't really burst them. There are a few more bursty targets to take down on NCSU, but I mean, they're still a uh, Zach and an Orn. You still have, I mean, obviously a lot of engage, but a big front line as well. So all these tanky health bars, not to mention the stopwatch, <laughs> you get, get kind of delaying the uh, mid game snowball that uh, you usually you usually get whenever you kill people. You kind of get denied now with the stopwatch. Mm. Um, right. Yeah, that. There, there's a reason why there's such long games nowadays, and it's team comps like that, and just the meta of the stopwatch. I expect I expect these team fights to be very interesting. Someone has to pull the trigger, but again, they have a lot of good out of jail free, out of jail free cards. And that's certainly the case. So always interesting to see, you know, when we've seen teams like this in the past, we've we've seen just on our CSL stream both of these teams compete and at, and at a very high level. Now we've had so many variables change. It's not just the players, which all of these teams are saying their players that they brought into the new roster are upgrades, right? They feel great about these new players. It's the strongest that this school has ever been in this iteration. That's, that's a point shared much by George Mason and NCSU. Um, you have to wonder now how these variables are going to, to change things up. What, how are they going to play the stopwatch better? You know, uh, how are they going to deal with the likes of an Orn now, um, a champion that wasn't out the last time these guys played? Um, one another. So I, I'm excited to see what all unfolds as a spectator delay is timing out. But we do have a little bit of information before we get into the game just to share with you guys, um, particularly about the new formatting system this year. If you are new and if you don't uh, quite understand what the Swiss format is, we do want to tell you about that. Um, Fekas, can you guide us through a little bit of how that works? Possibly not. Okay, well, I can uh, I can swing that one through. I got no, it. I got no, it. My no. mic was muted. I was, <laughs> everyone can see me on stream talking. That, that's, a, that's a big cue. Thank you, chat. But um, <laughs> uh, so Swiss format, uh, top players play, uh, versus top players, essentially. Bottom players versus bottom players. Mid players versus mid players. So these two teams are undefeated. So they're taking on each other. They're not going to anyone who's 3-0 would not take on a 2-1 team. Those 2-1 teams would take on 2-1 teams. And that essentially uh, eliminates any sort of um, oops, lost the Corpus. Sorry about that. One moment. There you go. Gotcha. So that essentially um, 
eliminates like say like oh it will nc uh ncsu they're taking on they're three and oh they're taking on george mason's three and oh they're not going to take on somebody who hasn't won a game because i mean honestly that's not fair that's just that's going to be a stop more than likely so that's essentially is what the swiss format is going to be now with that being said um two losses and uh, you you're you're in very big trouble so at at three at three zero, you're standing very nicely. You you don't want to you obviously don't want to lose. Every game is extremely crucial in the Swiss format. But um, yeah, with that being said, um, you still have a little bit of leeway. You don't want to lose two. You're out. You can lose one. You have that buffer. You can still advance onto the playoffs. But right now, both these teams sitting very nicely at three and zero, so they have a little bit of leeway. But again, Swiss format, you have a lot of uh, or every every game is very crucial. Yeah, absolutely. So. Going to see how this one does pan out because it will only drop them down to the one loss. Um, and either of these schools, you know, to be the one loss, I would I would not feel great being the three and one school that has to take on these guys next week. Um, either of these losing teams because these are teams that we expect to see both of kind of you know late into the season potential rematch uh, storylines being built up there. So as we do get into this game, got just a little bit more information to share with you all about CSL, who we are, and how we operate. If you want to get involved. If you want to join our Discord, it's one of the best ways to keep up with everything that's going on, schedule scrims, get people involved. You can chat exclamation point Discord in the Twitch chat for that, and we'll get you taken care of. If you want to follow us on Twitter or Facebook, it's twitter.com slash cstarleague, facebook.com slash cstarleague. Very nice, very easy. I want to give a huge shout-out to Twitch, nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in all competitive gaming to support our collegiate esport ventures. Keep up with what they're doing Twitter.com slash Twitch, Facebook.com slash Twitch, Twitch.tv. It's where you are right now. Be always on the lookout for cool ways to get involved with what they're doing. Lastly, if you can't watch us live, head over to YouTube. Uh, we do track all of our games, YouTube.com slash user slash C Star League. Just in case, you know, you got a busy weekend, can't watch it all live. We understand. We got the games right there for you. So that's uh, that's all we have for that one. Yeah, very and much. Yeah, I would say very much so. I would. I mean, YouTube is a great source for that because uh, we all have busy lives. So definitely go check that out. You can also check out my show on Fridays, Board Up. Also, that's on YouTube. Thank you very much, Corvus. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So I'll, uh, I'll plug it next time. <laughs> no, you're fine. So one thing we're actually seeing here, um, there was the uh, the patch recently. I think it was uh, yesterday or two days ago. The uh, the min de uh, minion dematerializers in the mid lane. So what they did usually you do see. Um, the uh, inspiration go on go for the second uh, the second um, rune tree. Sorry, I can't get my words out there. Normally, you'd see stopwatch and the magical boots being taken, but now the magical boots and the stopwatch. Uh, they th right, I thought that was a little bit too powerful, getting two free items uh, for absolutely nothing, just waiting time. So they decided to move those in the trees, and now uh, stopwatch and. Uh, the magical boots are actually the same tree, so you have to pick one. You can't pick both of them, and consequently, you're seeing a lot of mid laners go minion dematerializer. That way, they can shove a little bit harder and also roam a little bit easier. Now, having <laughs> having two of them take it, kind of, I might cancel that out. We're gonna see how it turns out, but uh, that is the reason why you're seeing dematerializers in the mid lane along with that stopwatch now. That's just gonna push us a little bit closer to that uh, wombo combo team fighting stage of the game that we're all looking so forward to. Uh, so I'm A-OK -okay with it if the mid laners want to be roaming against one another. And, uh, you know, just shove as early of a lead as you can. Go out. Elsewhere. Looks like the lanes are uh, already starting to heat up a little bit. Enrique and Alex taking a good bit on the chin. Uh, Hani and Barcode, as he is apt to be called. That is Johnny in 2K17. Uh, but Barcode, uh, as we now know him. Johnny 2.0, uh, no. if anything. Johnny 2.0. We'll see how he rings up here. Yeah, so Alex, that, good damage training. Yeah, so this was interesting. So Johnny and Hani, they or the barcode and Hani, they have the level advantage. They had level two advantage already. But not to mention the power, the power spike of, uh, well, the level two power spike of Zaya and Rakan way stronger than level two power spike of a Brom and a Varus. Varus, I mean, he's still again, he needs to be safe. He doesn't need to go in too hard early on, especially if he doesn't have his blight. Which is uh you know d does do the percent health damage after you do uh, an auto attack on well uh, the uh, the ability once you stack the blight on him I should say, so Zaya doesn't need that Zaya can actually dish out quite a bit of damage at level two not to mention you have the CC of Rakan extremely powerful in that bot lane they took advantage they even went on to a Brom who you know in his own right is tanky innately but it doesn't matter when you have that level two spike um, especially early on the health bars melt pretty quickly. Yeah no certainly and and two Brom's. Level 2 is going to be defensive in almost every case. He's not going to want to grab his W for just, you know, the stand behind me. Uh, 
No, not, uh, not the stand behind me. Sorry, the uh, no, the stand behind me. Yeah, when, when he jumps, you got it. Um, yeah, I thought I had it right. Um, he's not gonna want to grab that until just about level three, so it, it's pretty standard. You go Winter's Bite into your shield then, um, as a second option. So really, you're only becoming more defensive oh. at that second level. So yeah, it's certainly a green light go sign. Enrique, both summoners to have to get out of that one, and now. Barco and Hani are laying down the hurt in this bottom lane. It's only the Ignite Summoner out of Hani for two. Yeah, and you're seeing that aggression from Hani. He knows exactly when to set things up. He, they're just out of tower. They were able to uh, yeah, get both summoners out of Varus, Enrique. And that is going to be huge coming into this uh, bot lane because Donut Delight, he's on Zac. He can dive that so easily. And there's so much potential of a dive, especially with Cell Division coming out from uh, Donut Delight's Zac as we see a little bit of... A little bit of a contention over reward, but it's going to be taken out. Donut Delight not going to be intimidated by that. But so much pressure going to be put on the bot lane now that Enrique has no summoners. And there is no exhaust either on Alex. So that is a huge target on the back of Enrique. Only have to play this one carefully now, which only means worse CS disparity is likely to build here. It was about 10 down. Uh, Enrique will be first back to lane, so they'll have a little bit of time to catch up on that. But once Barcode and Hani get down and just start shoving this lane out because they are stacking a really nice big bot lane wave here for them, uh, I do expect to see that CS disparity grow quite considerably, uh, especially as it's going to be likely Enrique and Alex well under their towers, just with the two dagger by. Um, so uh, as opposed to the two long swords now over in the hands of Barcode. So uh, I, I would not be surprised to see possibly a roam from Firefly coming down pretty soon. This is going to be the time, hey, look, we need the help. Bot side of the map's already going to be a very strong one in contention for the neutral objectives, just because it is the Infernal Drake down there. And that's one of the ones that, you know, teams are not always as afraid to fight for early. Um, you know, if it's a Cloud Drake, you know, no one's going to just, you know, grab it when it's convenient. But, but an Infernal Drake, a little bit more um, weight to that. And so we'll see how the focus plays out building on this bot side of the map. Yeah, and you do see actually both junglers on that south side. Donut Delight at his Gromp and uh, Firefly at his Raptors. So you do uh, more than likely are going to see a little bit of contention coming out pretty soon. There is a, a ward, a pink, uh, I can say, sorry, not a pink ward, control ward on the bot side for uh, North Carolina State. So they have the vision. They can uh, actually you see Donut Delight sneaking his way down there. Corvus, we might have something coming up here on the bot side. Uh, we we even see so. Shadow Visions coming down. Yeah, a lot of tension mounting around here, and it is, uh, looks to be alleviated. They just wanted the vision for North Carolina State for the time being, and I think a little bit more on the clear side from Donut Delight before he really starts swinging down to this one. They likely know that Firefly's here at this point. I think they're both pinging that around. They're trying to clear the wards, though, and this is not the best pathing, Hani. They're backing up. Here should come the other members of North Carolina State, and a nice double route will likely get them out. But that was almost really bad, just walking right into that uh, bush. Yeah, extremely, <laughs> very bad for sure. But let's keep in mind, they kept their summoners, so there's really nothing uh, too much loss in that bot side, and the wave was shoved. So um, Barco, Johnny 2.0, and Hani, um, they're not going to lose too much. They Even if they were in that lane on the bot side, they weren't going to be able to get too much on the wave. And yeah, they're just going to go back and farm the wave because, yeah, again, it's shoved. You can't really do too much, although we see Hani going in. He's, he's going to slip right back out, and that is the advantage of playing a Rakan. No matter what, you can do that, but with Zaya, it's even more powerful because you have that assurance of that extra range for his, his escape. But as you can see, Rike, he just has to focus on the turret, or uh, I'm sorry, on the minions. He cannot focus on uh, trading any, any sort of uh, damage back because he's pretty low in CS compared to Barcode here. Look at the, the numbers between, and then remember that this is the priority for both teams, right? This was Instalock Varus for uh, Enrique. That was the first pick on the side of George Mason. And the bot lane um, was the first pickup for North Carolina State. So they, they grabbed that both first round of the draft. They both knew, hey, look, we want to play this in some capacity. And it's working out really well for NCSU right this second. Now we've seen George Mason at least show a little bit of understanding that this is where they probably need to stop the bleeding. They tried to mount something up. Didn't quite work, but... Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them return to that pretty soon here as the lanes are staying pretty neutral otherwise, at least in the mid lane. We do see Ion building up a nice little advantage in the top lane for himself. He oh. for the most part, but look at Donut Delight coming in here for the first part. That is going to be first blood taken out and away, and they're not going to find the second, but that's A-OK. -okay. They do pick off Enrique. The flash not quite up, the heal up, but not maybe not necessary the burst was quite heavy there as they did just take him from 50 to 0 quite quickly and so this is 
a big advantage, but now we have the 1v1 going down in the top lane. Whopper's going to be pretty low. Ion likely not going to be able to finish this. He would have to step under tower, but the first tower advantage going over to North Carolina State here. They take that one out in just nine minutes. Yeah, extremely easy gank for Donut Delight in the bot side, and that was the advantage. Again, Enrique just now got his flash up at this exact moment, so didn't have his heal either. So yeah, he had when you have no summoners as a Varus, you have to be extremely cautious, and again, Underneath the turret, it's still a danger zone. You have to ward every bush and look at the control wards on the bot side. The uh, the bot side of, of NCSU, they're doing a great job of keeping vision control in that bot side, allowing Donut Delight to come in, dive the tower, no problem. Didn't even have to use a cell division, but able to dive the tower successfully. Could take that tower, the first tower of the game, rotate, get the uh, dragon, that's the infernal drake, and that's also the first, uh, first drake of the game. Very huge play for North Carolina State. Absolutely, and it's another Infernal Drake coming up in six minutes after this one, so that's going to be a pretty nice, pleasant surprise for the guys over in NCSU. They're going to definitely want to start stacking those as early as possible. Um, you know, gives chance, too, for George Mason to up the ante, take things back in the other direction, even things out, but with the vision control coming out of the side of North Carolina State around that Dragon Pit, you can definitely tell that this was their priority. They definitely wanted to build into that, and they jumped right on it the very second they got to... Uh, got that tower taken away they knew they had the time so uh, it's nice to see a plan executed upon and they're first to this lane slop in the top lane too we'll see how ion reacts now yeah and i like mcsu's uh, strategy here they have strong laners they have very strong individual laners and not to mention a strong bot lane like i said their bot lane last year was uh was actually it was a very well renowned uh, uh, honey had a great bard uh, johnny um he, he complimented honey very well and you know vice versa so they're playing to their strengths and again we're seeing that all the vision control on the bot side they've been training over the summer uh like i said the, the, the three ma uh, three main members from last year are the same squad and shadow visions johnny and honey so they've been practicing they've been doing very well with the bot side control and uh, it's paying off because now yeah they're going to rotate top lane it's typically what you see nowadays but you see that uh, george mason they actually are answering it don't know if they can if they can keep up with it. We do see Firefly hanging out in the bot side. Hani is going to scout him out. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, we have four members coming in from North Carolina State University. As a double bounce finds two. That's going to be pretty big. Ooh. Firefly very low. Taking away Shadow Vision takes a credit for that one. Now they're split. They have to decide who to follow up on next. But the Talia Wall does keep Enrique in Aww. place, and he's not going to find too much with his chain of corruption there. I think Hani and Shadow Visions might be able to pull something off there. They say no. They do have to back up. Keep in mind that they're still between two towers, and their exit strategy is only through this river, so they do have to be careful. They will pull this one off and take a nice kill for themselves. I think they wanted more, but they'll be very content just to take an advantage over Firefly. And the brawling continues. Is Donut Delight actually going to be taken pretty hard up as Route finds that one? Shadow and Hani are here, so they're really only going to pop the passive. He's A-OK -okay to just get back together in one piece. Yeah, that is the benefit of, uh, of being a Zach. You can't just make reckless dives like that because that was extremely reckless. He was by himself um, against Route and Alex, so he had really nothing there to, to to really take anybody down with. He was waiting for Barcode and Hani to get over to his, uh, to his for his backup, but didn't happen fast enough. Now we do see that Cell Division down. And by the way, Corvus, uh, look, they actually have the Keystones on the portraits now. How about that? Huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, looky there. Where, where are you seeing this? They're, uh, they're underneath the uh, the summoner icons, aren't they, for you? There it is. I was looking at it. That is an excellent... Nice. Oh, man, nice. that makes our lives so much easier. Yeah, while we talked about that, though, top lane, uh, they did take the turret for uh, in favor of NCSU, so they are now two turrets up and uh, taking control of this game. They have the map wide open, and look, more control wards around, this time, the Rift Herald, because that would be the next point of contention, considering the dragon is not up for a few more minutes still, and why not just accelerate your lead, get that Rift Herald, get a tower, and again, just accelerate your lead into this mid-game. Don't let the, the George Mason have a chance to make that team comp come online. Right. All the time in the world here, I could see that the Rift Herald might not be the singular most important thing for the guys in North Carolina State. Obviously, you still want to take it if you have that opening, and I don't think Donut Delight really has too many other lanes to be ganking right now. So, you know, uh, definitely make that his priority. And if he needs the help elsewhere, you know, round it in for him. But uh, at this point, it looks like they really just want to keep laying down the hurt to this bot lane now turned top for George Mason Enrique. In a little bit of trouble. Hani might be making the bait happen here. They do pull out the teleport. The remaining members of North Carolina State likely haven't been seen in their pool. 
potential here. Ooh, nice, nice jump out from Barco to avoid the shockwave, but now he's in trouble as Ion is over the wall. The health bar's low. Has to flash out of this fight as the fight breaks out in earnest. That's a lot of damage going down from both sides. Here comes the uh, call of the Forge guy coming up to get a four-man knockup. Alex now going to be in trouble. The health bar that they want to find very quickly. The stopwatch keeps him in good shape there. Ion going mega just in time to potentially save him, but does go down anyway. Alex as well, so the fight turns for the favor of North Carolina State and Enrique in some serious trouble. It's a three for oh thus far. We'll see if Route can pick off one. He can. Finds a cheeky shot over the wall and scan out barcode in this fight. But I think it's going to be the Rift Herald taken out in a way very free for the side of North Carolina State here. They're going to police off the blue buff, take out the Rift Herald. I don't believe that Route and Firefly can do much to salvage that one. And that's going to be a pretty big takeaway. Only losing their AD, so Barco with a little blemish on his record there, but all in all, I think they're going to be very happy with the way that fight turned out. Yeah, that fight was absolutely beautiful until the, for NCSU until that very end. Route just got a nice command dissonance out of nowhere onto Barcode. He didn't have anything left, didn't have his ult to dodge it. Nice ult, by the way, by Barcode to dodge the Shockwave to set up that initial mm -hmm. that initial team fight in the first place. So, huge play by NCSU. Beautiful team fight. Uh, Barcode was able to stay safe that entire time, and that is the that is the front line that I was talking about. Hani got in, knocked everybody up. Donut Delight knocked everybody up. Hani got out because he's a squishy he's a squishy support. He can't stay in, but he can get in and out. So very nice play on the comp. Whoppers doing very well in Shadow Visions, just dishing out damage, staying safe. Very nice played by uh, NCSU. Pick up the Rift Herald. Let's see where they use it. More than likely mid lane, the only outer turret left for George Mason. But the next dragon is up, and that is going to be the Infernal Drake. So that'll be the second Infernal Drake, and that'll be coming for. Uh, well, I'm mean, coming on the rift in about 10 seconds, five seconds or so, and uh, NCSU, they, I'm sure they would like a second Infernal Drake. Sure, it's the vision control story, though, very much in favor of George Mason this time around. It was strong vision control that netted the objectives twice now over to NCSU. The Dragon and the Rift Herald will see now if George Mason can make something of this. I really like the preparation going into this. I really like contesting this Infernal Drake because you do not want to let him get two. So I think superior warding really has is, is made this one a pretty easy call for George Mason. I don't think they're going to be contested on this one at all. Really nice play. Yeah, NCSU, they're just going to back off, not risk any sort of fight because they have the lead right now. A fight could turn that, and they don't think an Infernal Drake is worth it considering they already have one. So now the Infernal Drakes are just matched. They already, I mean, NCSU, they already feel like they have the advantage, so they don't really need to shove it anymore unnecessarily. Just take the small win that you have, or the small window of power that you have, and run with that. We see we Weaver Wall coming down on the bot side. Yeah, this is not good. Enrique shoved out <laughs> very hard. Goodbye. That one's not even actually going to get an assist credit over to Donut Delight. So, a little bit of a panic mode for Varus. Died with both summoners up because I don't think he had any chance of getting out of that one. So, uh, you know, just take the death. Uh, unfortunately, not going to be there to defend the tower. And with no teleport from Ion, actually, this could be very bad news for this bot lane tower. Shelly is on it, and I think they're going to try to keep pushing this one in through because they have the wave. They still have the Rift Herald. And now the inhibitor tower, they're knocking on the door of the base at only 17 short minutes here. Let Rift Herald just die out as they now try to rotate towards the mid lane. Very smart turret rotation coming out from the side of North Carolina State. We'll see if there's any answer from George Mason. Yeah, the mid turret's the only one left as far as outer turrets go. We have an engage from Donor Delight. Yeah, he wants to find it. Does get into the back line. He's taking two towers. The less bounce only brings Alex in, and that's really not the best target there. There is the call of the Forge God to come down, as well as the Glacial Prism coming out from Firefly. So they do have a nice amount of slowdown, but it's not enough damage to capitalize on. Enrique was there, part of that fight, did contribute, but maybe didn't get the damage out that he wanted. And so, the tower for now it is at the cost of two very big ultimates. Uh, we'll see what else can... Uh, can play out here, but I think that's a pretty good hold coming out from George Mason. It was a very nice hold. That was uh, Donut Delight just getting very, uh, I guess, um, overzealous with the engage. They didn't need to do that. They just need to shove turrets. It's, I mean, whenever you have the advantage, whenever you have uh, the power in your favor, you don't need kills anymore. You just need objectives. You need turrets. You need to, um, I mean, obviously, you need the nexus, and you need to get there by getting taking the turrets. And I think they just missed an opportunity to take that turret. Nice hold, again, by George Mason. They, uh, that's only going to uh, delay this game a little bit longer and in the favor of George Mason. Every, anytime the game is delayed at this point, it is going to be in the favor of George Mason because the longer the game goes on, the more power they can try to equal out, equalize in this game right. to NCSU. They have the NCSU have the advantage. Once again, they don't need kills. They need objectives, and uh, they need to stop those kind of dives. I think so, and and it's all standing gold, uh, the deficit between these two, right? Uh, the, the kills are obviously a big portion of it. But three towers will do a lot to bring that 
four or five k gold deficit right back to uh, to equilibrium. Uh, so, the, the question is, where do you start these fights? Because they're policing so well around the map. Shadow Visions and Hani, particularly, these two guys are just roaming to where the action is every single time. And so it's going to rely on George Mason now to really make some decisions of, okay, you know what, we don't want to just fight this, uh, or we don't want to just defend this. We want to start picking off the right objectives, start setting up for the fights. We saw them do it well with the Dragon, but... The time's not on their side now because the Whopper split push game is coming into full effect and they really need to make a focused decision and, and stick to it quickly here. Yeah, the split push is going to be really harsh because he's already going to be pushing into the inhibitor turret on the bot side. So uh, George Mason, they absolutely 100% have to answer that. And it looks like uh, Ion is going to go back and go meet up Whoppers in the bot side here. So we see the... Uh, the Baron is going to be up in about 25 seconds. You would think NCSU would want to focus on that as, as well, but nice rotation by them. They saw that George Mason backed off. That might have been a little premature by George Mason, but they're now just going to shove in two turrets, almost uncontested. They got the second one halfway down. Realization, and so they're not going to be too afraid to just leave this one. That health's not going to come back, so really good play to get it that far in just a quick couple seconds. Don't let the light... Gonna have to use a let's bounce defensively this time around. Uh, not the worst thing in the world for him, but uh, does mean that they get out pretty much scot free on this one. The cell division's up too, so you know they may have been able to, to fight around a little bit longer, but just didn't want to take any chances. Didn't want to fight without the vision because vision control is still very much in the favor of George Mason University in their own south side jungle. So there, um, really good play to push him off. Uh, unfortunately, not the best play from George Mason to just hold those towers. They were caught with their pants down a little bit on that rotation. So they're trying to set up now here towards the Baron. That's obviously what they're terrified of at this point. And we're just going to see how it works out. Call the Forge God to come out. Route's going to be in some serious trouble here. Double knockup. And Shadow Vision's going to try to find that one. It's a shockwave to keep him busy for the meantime, but not going to be enough as Brom cannot save the day for this one. Alex, close, but no cigar this time around. Yeah, that was a big, uh, that was a big ultimate down, but nice on them to get Shadow Visions down on, on health so much because now they don't want to outright risk a full-on engage, but it looks like George Mason does. Really nice catch out actually on Tahani, but they don't have the follow-up without route to really pull in the full Wombo combo, so this does give an unfortunate amount of Baron priority to the side of North Carolina State. Unfortunate, that is, if you are George Mason University and so we'll see what they can do to respond to this one. I think it's actually just going to be the setup for the vision control. You know, we've seen North Carolina State. They're a team that really likes to anchor down in an area before they make any execution moves. We saw that with the Dragon. We saw that with the Rift Herald. I wouldn't be surprised to see it with the Baron. Um, as they're now trying to weigh, you know, what's the next objective here? Because their ward line is stretched pretty thin across the map. It's good vision control mostly focused around the center and jungle entrances, but it doesn't really tell us a whole lot as in terms of what's an important objective for them. Yeah, right now in CSU, they need to focus on that mid turret because it's almost down. Why not just pressure it, poke it, and take it down and back off? They could do that. Meanwhile, George Mason, they just need any turret right now. They don't have anything in, as far as objectives besides one Infernal Drake, which is nice, but uh, it's still only 22 minutes. That Infernal Drake, uh, the Infernal Drake's influence on the game is minimal at this point because of, uh, of how little percentage it's going to actually increase anything. But we actually have a Sneaky Baron. This one's going to be absolutely uncontested. They should be able to just take it down incredibly quickly. They do use the oh. Weaver's Wall just to cordon off a little bit of the map, so possibly going to tell Firefly what's going on now. He should know, but the Baron's health already taken out in a way by the time he could get there, so we'll see how they get out of the pit. Everyone's oh just going to be over the wall using their respective bounces, flashes, hops, skips, jumps, and otherwise. So they do burn a little bit to get out of there. It's a flash for barcode, actually. A pretty big summoner, but absolutely well worth it to take away the Baron. That trade works out for him. And now the split push game from Whoppers is going to be insane. I am so excited that it just happened because that was an extremely nice vision control from NCSU over on the Baron. They are able to sneak that because, I mean, you have Isaiah. Isaiah can dish out so much damage so quickly. So taking advantage of that one, not to mention Shadow Visions can also dish out a huge amount of damage early on as well. But... That was also, hold on, maybe, no, not yet. maybe, maybe, there it is. The light just posturing about, but they do kick Alex back onto that one. I own, nice double knock in into the wall, but the damage follow up possibly not there. Oh Call the my God. God. Finds Alex Orn on the back line as well, taking out route. That's the double kill for him. Now barcode has gone down to the Mega Nar. I own will have to use that stopwatch for the first time in the game and Shadow Visions is right there the second it times out. 
to say that's a kill for me taking away all five members participating in that one so this should be another tower inhibitor combo coming down for the side of north carolina state university i really don't think the damage is there from enrique and the timer only five seconds on alex but there's not much a brom can do to hold this out in the situation either so they're really only worried about the 10 seconds left for route and that's more than enough time to take this inhibitor reset and shove out this bot lane wave a little bit harder as well before they leave if they wanted to we'll see firefly trying to buy the time but I think this should close the book on North Carolina's push here before they go back and just reset. North Carolina State, should I add? Yeah, and they're going to reset and still have that Baron for another push, so they may focus on the top turret, considering it's the only outer turret left, or inner turret, I should say. Um, that would be a wise decision, just being able to take that one out. They're also going to pick up the Cloud Drake while they're at it, just because it's there. Because, well, again, why not? That actually helps you get rotations around the map a little bit easier. That way they can, especially if Whoppers, he's split pushing, doesn't want to use his uh, teleport, can get to the mid lane fast enough. Although the mid lane might not be much of an issue, considering the inhibitor is down now. We do see Rout taking his blue buff, so he's going to try to you know, stay alive during these team fights and take advantage of that as much as possible because he is a big powerful force on George Mason. He once he, if he lands these shockwaves, he's I mean that usually um, is able to delete somebody at least if if he has some backup. He's not quite at the point where a shockwave dissonance will delete somebody outright, even Isaiah. But um, he is almost coming online with his. Uh, Morello Namicon and Leandri's Torment. He's almost there. Not quite though. Needs about one more item to be able to get that that delete mid lane power that you people like to see. But we do see some pressure coming in on the top side. A lot of grouping. There is no teleport for the top laner of George Mason. There is for Whoppers, the top laner of NCSU. So that is something to keep in mind because <laughs> Ione he has to go to the bot side to answer this this wave push. Yeah, I actually think I would have much preferred to see the swapped out a little bit here leave whoppers in the top lane with the outer turret to worry about and then send the other four knocking on the door of that inhibitor uh an inhibitor tower uh just to keep things moving in the right direction for north carolina state now obviously they have a plan they're sticking to it they know what they're doing so won't levy too much criticism onto that one but it is going to i think balance things slightly in the favor of ion here just to be able to to snap back to that mid lane because he's got a shorter lane to police here and, uh, and then he can really lend a lot of help with those super minions. Yeah, very much so. And those uh, the super minions are starting to pour into the base, and somebody has to go answer, and that is going to be Enrique. So this could be an offset fight, or at least a 4v... Uh, actually, a 4v3 on the top side. We do see Donut Delight hovering around. He is not prone... Uh, I guess he's not... He doesn't shy away from diving, especially when Hani's there to dive with him. So maybe he's... Definitely he's, not skittish about it. No, he's definitely not. But we do see the, the remaining two members of George Mason come up to the top side, at least hover around that. Meanwhile, Whoppers is still pushing. They have to enter that as well. There's all, so much pressure on the side of George Mason that NCESU is applying. This is a great tactic by them. Um, a three... <laughs> a four zero one split push that they can now brute force into this top side and just take this turret push coming out from North Carolina State. The, what's different is usually when you're split pushing, the four members really just want to hold the attention of the remaining five uh, on the opposing team, Ooh. while then the top laner does the damage that he's there to do to their base. This time around, the four members of North Carolina State are, are actually A-OK -okay to just push off the remaining five. Kind of sixth man they have in the super minions there in that mid lane, so... Um, really worked out well for him, so didn't take uh, the side lane objectives. We're able to just group as four and take away a clean top lane tower. So now it is only four towers remaining on this map for George Mason University. They have two at their nexus and one guarding each side lane inhibitor. A little bit nervous here, a little bit of sweat if you are the side of George Mason. 27 minutes in, Baron's only a couple minutes out, and... North Carolina State shows no signs of slowing down here. Yeah, not at all. It's been it's a 10k gold gap right now, a 9.5. You really want to get technical about this, but um, that's increased slowly, gradually, almost every few minutes. So, um, NCSU they are running away with this one and doing a great job establishing that early game and holding on to it in the mid game. We see some teams uh, slip on that note, but um, NCSU again, all the practice over the summer, they've it's it's paid off so well for them. And look at the placement of that of that control ward for uh, Donut Delight. It was just on the edge of that brush, able to pick up anything inside the blue area, and along with the curvature around the blue area, so he's able to pick up the to the, or clear the ward around it as well. So very nice place. It's just like little things like that, helping them shove themselves to the next level and. Uh, 
just run all over George Mason in this. We do see Baron going to be up in about 50 seconds. That'll be a huge point of contention, and we already see Vision Control being established by NCSU. Yeah. They're certainly about their current position, just tightening down their Vision Control every time they get a little bit closer in, and uh, now possibly actually getting ready to engage onto Firefly. That is the Let's Bounce oh, Back, wow. and they do bring in Alex, charmed up. He never stood a chance. We'll pop down the Glacial Fissure, but it's really only a formality. He is going to go down there. I said he never stood a chance. He actually got a pretty good one. But look Ooh. at this. Enrique is in some trouble. Firefly. Actually, Barcode finds two with that route helping out. That is going to be pretty huge. Firefly going to be knocked down here. Not in a good position. Whoppers does go down to that one. I own trying to hold things out here as the... Light stacks are getting ready to rip up. Enrique trying to do the damage that he can here just to get Whoppers finally taken down. Yes, does find it. Route is the credit to go to there, but the health bars are so low from George Mason. That's the cleanest, quickest fight they've had, and they still lost two, but they do pick up three in return. Whoppers, Barcode, and Hani all going down. Means this push is effectively dead in the water for George Mason, or uh, for um, North Carolina State, sorry. That was such a glimmer of hope for George Mason. They were able to successfully win a team fight. Yes, losing two, but when you, even if you go even at the stage that you're at right now, at 10K gold down, you are a huge, you, that's a huge win for you. So they were able to do that. The inhibitor turret, or the inhibitor, I should say, is up in the mid lane for George Mason, which means they can relieve some of this pressure that is just building up onto them. They're clearing some waves. They have a little bit of reprieve here, and now they're going to go sweep and place wards themselves. Huge fight for George Mason that just might give them a glimmer of hope in this game that if they can do that one more time, maybe maybe two more times, they might actually be able to stand a chance into these late game team fights if it goes that far. I think so. I really have to commend Alex for staying alive so long. The time yeah. Let's Bounce really did trigger this entire run of events, and I, I kind of wrote him off as dead the second I saw that happen, but he managed to stay alive, managed to play it out, and really build his team a pretty good chance there for the rest of the uh, foundation for what else happened. Now, Donut Delight trying to keep the pressure on quickly. Alex in the situation again. We'll see what he can do onto this one. Hani quite low. Has to be careful. His Channel Corruptions do find him. Will die. Alex takes the credit oh. for that one. Now, Donut Delight going to be in some trouble. The Shockwave comes down. It is Route now having to use the uh, Zone Hourglass just to be safe here. Now, Whopper's trying to find this one through, but Route is on a killing spree. Barcode is dead. Donut Delight is dead, and now they're going to find it onto Whopper. He's going to go down. Route stays alive through it all, and finds Five members, they don't lose one this time, at least not yet, as they're pushing on. Ion wants to find Shadow Visions. He's on the run for his life, and the health bars are low. Will cost Firefly's life, but it looks like Shadow ace. Visions is certainly going to go down for it. And that's an ace taken out. These are so. They just went from 2 and 13 or 2 and 10 to 10 and 13 in oh. a matter of seconds. 5k gold shorn up like that, and a Baron potentially now. Really should be no contest, but the health bars are low. Can Enrique oh. do it? They're going to have Ion sacrifice himself <sighs> for it. So three members of NCSU, or I'm sorry, George Mason, do get that Baron. So that is really huge right now. That is going to re help propel any of these uh, pushes that NCSU are trying to form in, these, in, this, in this game. Which I say they're trying to form. They're really not. They're just letting the pushes do themselves because, or the minions do it themselves. Because Donut Delight is trying to make something happen that just isn't there. He's diving so far back and it's not doing well for his team. No one else is, it doesn't seem like anyone's ready for it. At this point in the game, he has Slingshot max, uh, maxed out right now. Now, which means he can dive further than anybody else on his team and nobody's able to keep up with him at this point so don't delight pulling the trigger when the gun isn't quite aimed properly and he's uh he's costing his team these fights right now considering he's getting destroyed and because uh enrique he's also online he has a blade of the rune king and a gwensu's gwensu's rage blade he, that's really all you need for Avaris at this point. He is destroying Donut Delight when he gets into the uh, into these team fights. And Donut Delight has to use his ultimate, his um, Let's Bounce defensively. Not ideal. You want to be able to get those priority targets like Enrique. When you don't hit them, get out, reset, and he's not doing that. And by that time, the re-engage comes in from George Mason and is absolutely destroying NCSU. Caught off guard, and now we actually have a game on our hands. I think so. i got to give a lot of praise to Route for his play in these last couple fights as well. Route and Enrique have really been there. Their team has been making the windows for them, but they've been hopping through the windows with conviction each time, and I'm very proud of the way that these guys have been playing this one out. They have to be careful, because North Carolina State's just going to roam right back down to the mid lane and take this tower uncontested, or I'm sorry, inhibitor uncontested, 
while the Baron is actually in favor of George Mason. So they do need to find a way to turn this on pretty quickly. Teleport's coming through from the back line. It is Ion as the mini NAR. We'll see what he can come in and potentially make happen here as the engage. He wants to find it ready to go mega here. And that's going to be Braum coming in as well. The redemption's going to come down. They find barcode pretty low, but I don't think they can actually, I'm sorry, pretty slow. Weaver's wall. I don't think they can make it happen. Yeah, this is really bad now for the two engaging members of George Mason. I don't have to get out of that one. Alex's not going to get the chance to get out of that one. Shadow Visions is now here on the prowl. The Weaver's wall did cut that fight in half for them and stopped the tracks of George Mason dead where they stood. They are not going to be able to push this one out. And with the support dead, this is really tilting the scales back into the hands of North Carolina State here. That is a beautiful Weaver's Wall by Shadow Visions, able to cut off the entirety. Only two members uh, were able to actually get into that fight from George Mason. That's because Shadow Visions cut off the rest of the team, the damage dealers, with the Weaver's Wall. Very nicely played. Alex was not able to be effective in that because he got deleted, able to start and engage, but wasn't able to finish it because of no backup. Very huge Weaver's Wall. The, uh, that, 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 with that being said, not much is being, able picked up, being picked up off that by NCSU. So George Mason, they're just going to reset. They've been in this, this position before. They still have uh, Baron minions, Baron empowerment on, I think, two of their members so far. So they're still going to stay safe. And um, again, they've had their inhibitor yeah. down for about 10 minutes. They're familiar right now with this territory. They finally take the mid lane turret, all outer turrets down for NCSU. That is going to be a little bit more pressure relieved from George Mason as the gold gap is slowly closing. And it's just going to let them play for these neutral objectives a little bit harder, get their wards finally into the other side of the map, right? They've got uh, they've got two wards that are just barely in the jungle of North Carolina State, and so I think they'll consider that a bit of a moral victory for the way that this game has gone. And they're still just clawing things back uh, little by little, and the gold lead is still tilting back in the favor of uh, George Mason. Obviously, the gold lead favors North Carolina State right now for sure. It's still a 4K gold lead, but they brought it back from over a 10K deficit at its worst and now only down five kills so we'll see if they can keep that momentum going because it is the momentum that's the most important storyline to follow right now and whether or not it can be wrestled back to the hands of north carolina state this this team that's still very much in the face of george mason or whether or not george mason can take that and miraculously turn it into the comeback yeah this is such an exciting game right now three dragons on the side of ncsu so they have uh they have oh my god shadow visions one distance Jesus, needs to be careful, cannot... Yeah, that hurts. Get, yeah, Route is extremely powerful, has not only Azani's Hourglass added to those items I listed off earlier, now a Void Staff too, so he's going to be hurting so hard, and we just saw an example of that one, but you do see the three dragons on the side of NCSU, so they have a uh, they have a late game strategy here that they could play into outside of their just average, just uh, their general team fights, not not including the Baron. They do have that Elder Drake. It would be extremely powerful for them because these team this team fights going so close in both ways, but and an Elder Drake would really shove that in the favor of NCSU. They're going to be focusing that one pretty soon. It should be coming up. Yeah, going to be coming up in a minute and fifty seconds. So. That is going to be exciting. I, I, yeah, huge fight going to be coming up in about two minutes. For the side of George Mason, it is the Salvation Drake. For the side of North Carolina State, it is the Diversity Drake. Just going to buff up all their little power spikes that they've been building from their eclectic what, what range nice, of dragons. What a nice dragons. name of the, for that Drake, by the way. Very nice name. Because like, they have so many other Drakes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see what they pick up here. It is definitely going to be the center point of contention, but... At the same time, Baron is up only 10 seconds after. So teams will have to make a decision as to how they want to play. We've seen so many times. Oh, yeah, it's fine. You want to set up for the Elder Drake. We're going to try to take the Baron here. I think no matter what, the game favors the hands of North Carolina State just because they do have that Mountain Drake for additional shredding on whichever of these two monsters they want to take out. So looks like they're just going to be setting up wards. The obviously priority is around this Elder Drake first. There have been plenty of Barons. None have ended the game thus far. So we'll see how this one turns out as 50 seconds. And now George Mason are trying to get in and set up the wards. The control is certainly there. And we may see a little bit of aggression coming out early as they're just trying to shove up this mid lane. Yeah, like I said, the NCSU, they, yeah, they, the NCSU, they need this late game. They need this Elder Drake so bad. And uh, George Mason knows that. The Baron is actually going to be a so pretty... Smart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's you the see, look what they're doing. They're just going to shove out yeah. the bottom lane. Awesome. They're finding a gap 
when they're taking it. This is insane. That is a very clever play. They can they take these down. The Elder Dragon is bait. They can take these down so fast. Teleport is going to save that minion. That means the teleport is down for Whoppers, but that also means that NCSU is five strong in the bot side. They're trying to get a flank. What happens here, Corvus? Here comes oh, yeah, the engage. They got the tower. Will the fight work out in their favor, though? That is going to be the Let's Bounce trying to get in on the things, but Enrique's on a killing spree as he finds Hani. Not going to be okay into this one, and that's going to be Whoppers going down as well. Route rampaging through this. They wanted this from North Carolina State. I don't think they realized it would take them so little time from the hands of George Mason to get back in. Alex out of the fight with a low health bar. Better to oh, be back out of that one than dead. They're going to try to stay on the barcode, but look at that. Iom does go down. Enrique finds him on the turn back, and now Donut Delight on the run out. Shadow Visions pretty much out of this fight. The Weaver's Wall might just save his jungler. Oh, my you God. Me? Donut Delight skipping out of there with just a barely bit of a pulse. Now the Elder Drake, though, he is here. The Oh, my God. So you have to wonder, Donut Delight, I think he's going to go for this one. He has to go for this one because oh, these team fights are so close. Oh, my God. Don't want to give this one away for free. We'll uh, see if he does use the action team shot to get over there. The ward C, and he's been found out. Oh, the answer is likely no. Dragon resets just a little bit, but ooh. no, that will go into the hands of George Mason University. And just when we thought... North Carolina State may have pulled an insane play out of the bag, getting down that tower and really trying to stretch things back in their favor. It is the pickup play coming out from George Mason to just put things back on the right way. Yeah, interesting. They're not going to go for the Baron just yet. They actually are pinging for it now, but it might be too little too late. They can shred this Baron very quickly, but you know, it only takes a split second for uh, Route to get there, throw a shockwave and delete somebody because that's exactly what's been happening thus far. And now the Baron, they're just going to set uh, vision around it. So they're not going to be able to take it up in here, up here now. And now it's uh, NCSU. They need to completely avoid George Mason team fight. And I'm, I cannot believe I'm saying this at 40 minutes. I thought this game would have been done 15 minutes ago. They're still, George Mason's still fighting. Props to them. This is an incredible. Well, they game. took the first inhibitor tower right around, I think, like 20, 19 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes, yeah. something like that. So you think you're knocking at the door of the base, you're ready to be in a good position, but man alive, the turtle coming out from, uh, from George Mason here has been a snapping turtle, right? Because every single time that uh, North Carolina State's tried to get in onto things, they have just been bitten hard. Right. But let's uh let's not forget though let's not forget though the the mistakes by NCSU uh, NCSU Donut Delight he did not need to engage at least two of those team fights early on about ten minutes ago he could have easily just let his team shove a turret and um, just just slow push but these these team fights have been going in the favor of George Mason because of poor positioning from NCSU and now we're seeing the result of that Weaver's Wall actually blocked oh, by no. the Brom. Very nice door Look by Rom. that, Alex. Oh, God. Holding that one out. Hani's now trying to get in on the things with Shadow Visions. They both want a little bit of a piece of this pie. They're trying to keep the Baron's health low from the side of George Mason just to buy enough time for Whoppers to get in there. Do not have the teleport. So it is a heads-up play coming out from George Mason, but they have to be careful now because it is a 5 on 5 The route's health bar already so low. is shut down. Shadow Visions finding that one easily. There's the Let's Bounce, and that's a great engage when it finds Barcode. Look at the call of the Forge got just to tear through. George Mason is oh in my shambles. God. Look at that in a singular fight. North Carolina State have won this game easily. 45 seconds I on everybody. There is no time. I cannot believe that at a, just a moment's notice, a heartbeat. Everyone in George Mason is gone. Huge team fight. Route was able to. Not, I wouldn't even say that's a huge team fight. That was just. That was just so down to the wire. NCSU, I mean, the yeah. Second. NCSU oh flipped God. the switch. It was on. They found the engage. They found all they needed. Route was low. He did not have the Ooh. damage. And that's gonna be it. That's gonna be the first game going in 42 minutes. Over now to the side of North Carolina State. The gold lead once again huge. The kill lead once again huge. But the storyline of that game does not.